Hey guys, in this video we are going to be making a summer dress. To make this dress, I am using a peaches and cream yarn. This is a cotton yarn, and it is a number four medium weight yarn with a recommended hook size of five millimeters, which is what I will be using for this pattern. You can use whatever weight of yarn that you would like or whatever type of yarn you would like. You will just want to make sure that you have enough to make a dress the size that you would like. For this chain, you are going to want to chain as many as you need for the width around the bottom of the dress, wherever you would like the bottom of your dress to be. I am working my dress to be one width all the way up and down, so I am going to work my chain so that it will fit around the widest part of my body. Therefore, I am going to start with a chain of 112 stitches. The smallest we can work this pattern in rounds is eight stitches. And you are going to want to increase in increments of four. So again, I am working mine to be 112 stitches around. And I will put some reference numbers here on the screen. But again, the smallest you can make it in rounds is eight stitches, and then you'll want to increase in increments of four. So again, we are going to start with this chain. And if you need to see how to make this chain or anything else in this video, there will be links in those videos in the description box below. If you like this video and channel, please give this a like and subscribe and leave me a comment to tell me what you think. Also in the description box, you can find the link to my Etsy and there you can find the written pattern for this pattern as well as other art that I make and sell such as macrame pieces, jewelry, t-shirts, and more. So please check that out if you would like. And lastly, if you'd like to keep up with what I am up to outside of videos, you can follow me on Instagram at the craft nut and you can also tag me there with the things that you make for my patterns because I'd love to see your work too. When you have your beginning chain, the length that you need it to be in increments of four, which is also multiples of four, you will then want to make sure that this beginning chain is completely straight all the way back to the beginning stitch. And then we are going to slip stitch in the first stitch to make this a joint round. So again, slip stitch into that first stitch. And this will be counted as our first round. For the second round, we are going to start with a chain of two, which does not count as a stitch. And then we are going to work one double crochet into the same first stitch that we just slip stitched into. And then we're going to work one double crochet into the next stitch and each stitch all the way around this beginning chain. When you've made it all the way around that round and made sure that you have the same amount of double crochets as chains for your beginning chain, we will then slip stitch into the top of the beginning double crochet of the round. And that is the end of round two. And again, you should have the same amount of stitches for this round that you had for the beginning chain. Again, that corresponds with the count for this pattern. For the next round, round three, we are going to start with a chain of one, which does not count as a stitch. And we are going to single crochet into the same first stitch. And then we are going to chain five. We are then going to skip three stitches and single crochet into the next stitch. 
and that is what we are going to do all the way around this round. Again, chain five. And then skip three stitches and single crochet into the next stitch. And again, do that all the way around this round until you have three stitches left at the end of this round. When you've made it all the way around that round and you have three stitches left at the end, we are then going to chain two and then we are going to double crochet into the beginning single crochet of the round. And this is so that we start at the top middle of this quote unquote chain five space. And that is the end of round three. And at the end of this round, you should have a single crochet in a chain five space with three stitches skipped and another single crochet all the way around, except for right there at the end where we ended off the round differently. For round four, we are going to start off with a chain of one, which does not count as a stitch. And we are going to single crochet into this double crochet that we just worked. So again, single crochet into that stitch. And then we are going to chain three and single crochet around the next chain five space. So just single crochet right around that. And then we are again going to chain three and single crochet around the next chain five space. And that is what we are going to do all the way around this round until you have single crocheted around the last chain five space of the round. When you have single crocheted around the last chain five space of the round, we are then going to chain three more and slip stitch into the top of the beginning single crochet of this round. And this is the end of round four. And for this round, you should have a single crochet at the top of each chain five space and a chain three in between each single crochet. For the next round, round five, we're going to start with a chain of two, which does not count as a stitch. And we're going to double crochet into the same first single crochet of the round. And then we're going to work three double crochets around the next chain three space. And then we're going to work one double crochet into the next single crochet. And that is what we are going to do all the way around this round. Again, by working three double crochets around the next chain three space and one double crochet into the next single crochet. And do this all the way around this round. When you've made it all the way around that round, with a double crochet in each single crochet and three double crochets around each chain three space. We are then going to slip stitch into the top of the beginning double crochet of the round. And that was the end of round five. And at the end of this round, you should have the same amount of double crochets as you had for round two of double crochets and the beginning chain, which was round one. So again, that was the end of round five, and we are now going to go on to repeat round three, four, and five again one more time so that we repeat this three row pattern. So again, go on to repeat round three, four, and five one more time, and then we will go on to work the next few rounds in the repeating pattern. When you have finished repeating rounds three, four, and five, for rounds six, seven, and eight, we are then going to go on to work the next round, round nine. And to do this, we are going to start with a chain of three, which does not count as a stitch. 
and we are going to triple crochet in the same first stitch. We are then going to chain one, skip a stitch, and triple crochet in the next stitch. And that is what we are going to do all the way around this round. Again, chain one, skip a stitch, and triple crochet into the next stitch. And do that all the way around this round. When you've made it all the way around that round and you have a triple crochet in the second to last stitch of the round, we will then chain one more and skip that last stitch. And then we are going to slip stitch into the top of the beginning triple crochet of the round. And that is the end of round nine. And you should have a triple crochet and a chain one space all the way around this round. For round 10, we are going to be working with an X stitch. There are multiple names for this stitch, but that is what I call this stitch is an X stitch. So we are going to start with a chain of three, which counts as a double crochet with the last loop on the hook. And we are going to skip the chain space and work a double crochet in the next stitch. And this is now one, two double crochet together. Then we are going to work a chain of four, which counts as a double crochet and a chain one. And then we are going to work a double crochet into the top of the double crochet that we just worked. For an X stitch. We are then going to chain one, skip the chain one space, and then we are going to work an X stitch over the next two triple crochets. So we are going to yarn over twice, insert our hook into the next triple crochet, and pull up a loop. We should now have four loops around our hook. We are then going to yarn over and pull through two loops. So we now have three loops on our hook then yarn over and insert our hook into the next triple crochet, yarn over and pull up a loop. We now have five loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through two, and then we are going to yarn over and pull through two. And that is one, two double crochet together on the bottom, and we should still have three loops on our hook. We are then going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two for a double crochet, chain one, and then double crochet into the top of the one, two double crochet together that you just worked. For another X stitch. And that is what we are going to do all the way around this round. So we will now chain one, skip the next chain one space, and work an X stitch over the next two triple crochets like we just did. And we're going to do that all the way around until you've worked an X stitch over the last two triple crochets of the round, and you are left with one chain space. When you've made it all the way around that round and you have an X stitch worked over your last two triple crochets of the round, we are then going to chain one more and skip the last stitch and then slip stitch into the third chain of this top four of the beginning of the round. And that is the end of round 10. And for round 10, all the way around, you should have an X stitch with a chain one space all the way around this round. For the next round, round 11, we are going to start with a chain of three, which does not count as a stitch. And we are going to triple crochet into the same first stitch. 
and then we are going to chain one, skip the chain one space, and triple crochet into the next stitch. And that is what we are going to do all the way around this round. Begin by chaining one, skipping the chain one space, and triple crocheting into the next stitch. So you will chain one and skip every chain one space, and then triple crochet into the top of every point of each X stitch all the way around this round. When you've made it all the way around that round, you should have a triple crochet in the top of the end of the last X stitch from the previous round. And we are going to chain one more and skip the last chain one space and then slip stitch into the top of the beginning triple crochet of this round. And that was the end of round 11. And you should have one triple crochet with the chain one space all the way around this round. For the next round, round 12, we are going to start with the chain of two, which does not count as a stitch. And we are going to work a double crochet into the same first stitch. And then we are going to work a double crochet around the next chain one space. And we are going to double crochet into the next stitch and double crochet around the next chain one space. And that is what we are going to do all the way around this round. When you've made it all the way around that round with one double crochet in and around each stitch all the way around, we are then going to slip stitch into the top of the beginning double crochet of the round. And that is the end of round 12. And you should have the same amount of double crochets for this round as you have for your previous double crochet rounds and beginning chain. We are now going to go on to repeat rounds three through 12 until you have the length for your dress that you would like. So again, we are going to go on to repeat rounds three through 12 until you have the length for your dress that you would like. I am going to go on to work my dress to be about mid calf length, which is about 35 to 37 inches for me. But of course that can change depending on the person and height. So again, go on to make this as long as you would like it to be measuring from where you would like the straps to start. You will preferably want to end on a solid double crochet round when you are ready to start working the straps. And again, you're going to want to go on to repeat these rounds until you have the length for your dress that you would like, measuring from where you would like the straps to start. When you have worked your dress to the length that you would like it to be, measuring from where you would like the straps to start, we are then going to start the straps. And we are going to do this right off where we are ending at the top of our dress. Really, you can work these straps however you want, meaning you can make them solid double crochets all the way across. You can make them a solid double crochet row and an alternating double crochet every other stitch row or a triple crochet every other stitch. Or you can go through this pattern again, all except for the X stitch because it does not go down less than these stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you want your strap to stay seven stitches wide, you could do X stitches. But if you do five or anything less, you cannot do an X stitch throughout the strap. So again, how you do the strap really at this point is up to you. You will just want to start the strap off of here 
and then work it as long as you need it to be and leave as much space for your armhole as you need and then sew it to the back as we are going to and I will show you how to do as it is but again for the strap itself you can work it however you would like so I am going to want to work it as the repeating pattern without the X stitches so I'm going to start this with the row 3 repeat or round 3 repeat so I'm going to chain 1 which does not count as a stitch and I'm going to start this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 stitches wide so I get two of these arches and then I will work it down so that I am only using one arch. So again, with this chain one, I'm going to single crochet into the same stitch and I'm going to chain five, just like we normally would. Skip three stitches and single crochet into the next and then do that again. And this will be the first row of my strap. And again, I will work this down to be thinner to go all the way across. But for now, we are using nine stitches for the first row. For the second row of this strap, I'm going to turn my work because we are now working in rows. And we are going to start with a chain of four, which counts as a double crochet and a chain one. And we are going to single crochet around the chain five space as we normally would have. So now this is going to sit out like this. And then we are going to chain one, two, and three, as again as we normally would, and single crochet around the next chain five space. Then we are going to chain one and double crochet into this beginning single crochet of the first round or the first row I mean and again this is the second row of the strap it should look like this for the third row I'm going to turn my work and at this point I would like to actually make my strap a little thinner going up so I am not going to repeat this arch row twice at this point because again I would like to bring in a couple of stitches on this next double crochet row and that would mean on the next row after that there would not be enough stitches to work these arches again but for row three I'm going to start with a chain of two and I'm going to start a double crochet in the same first stitch again as we normally would but I'm going to leave the last two loops on the hook and then start a double crochet in the next stitch and then bring these two stitches together and one two double crochet together I am then going to go on to work the next few stitches the same way we normally would until I've worked a double crochet in this second single crochet so again I'm going to work a double crochet in the next single crochet and three double crochets around the chain three space and then work another double crochet in the second single crochet and then we are left with two stitches left which I am going to bring together and this is the beginning chain four from the previous row so we're going to start a double crochet around the chain one space the fourth chain of the beginning four and then start a double crochet in the third chain of the beginning four and bring the two stitches together and one two double crochet together and now this row has seven stitches instead of nine like the previous two rows For the fourth row, I am going to turn my work and I'm going to start with a chain of three, which does not count as a stitch. And then I'm going to triple crochet into the same first stitch. 
open chain one, skip a stitch and triple crochet into the next stitch. And that is what I'm going to do across this row. So again, chain one, skip a stitch and triple crochet into the next. And that leaves me with two more stitches, which again, I'm going to chain one, skip a stitch and triple crochet into the last stitch of the row, which is row four. For row five, we are again going to turn our work and I'm going to decrease again. At this point, I have seven stitches and I would like five stitches to go all the way across my strap so that I can continue this arch row again. And again, you do not have to decrease if you do not want to. You can work it one width all the way across and you do not have to do the arches or repeat the pattern for the strap at all. Again, you can work the strap however you would like. For me though, repeating this pattern, again, I'm going to decrease. So I'm going to start with a chain of two, which does not count as a stitch and start a double crochet in the first same stitch, leaving the last two loops on the hook and starting a double crochet around the next chain one space and bring the two stitches together. Then I'm going to work one double crochet in and around the next few stitches until I have two stitches left here at the end, a chain one space and a triple crochet. And again, I'm going to start a double crochet around the chain one space and start a double crochet in the triple crochet and bring the two stitches together. And I now have five stitches across row five. For row six, we now have five stitches, the amount of stitches I needed to repeat this arch row. And I have a triple crochet every other stitch row already. And we cannot do the X's on the strap. So at this point, I'm just going to repeat these five rows. So for row six, I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to work an arch across this strap by chaining one and single crocheting into the same stitch, then chaining five, skipping three stitches, and then single crocheting into the next stitch, which is the last stitch of the row. For row seven, we're going to turn our work and we're going to start with a chain of four, just like we did before which counts as a double crochet and a chain of one. And this time we only have one arch. So we are just going to single crochet around the arch, chain one, and then double crochet into the last single crochet of the row. And that is row seven. For row eight, I'm going to turn my work and start with the chain of two, which does not count as a stitch. And I'm going to double crochet into the same first stitch. And then we're going to work a double crochet around the next chain one space, a double crochet into the next single crochet, a double crochet around the next chain one space, which is the fourth chain of the beginning four from the previous row, and then work a double crochet in the third chain of the beginning four from the previous row. And you should still have five double crochets for that row. For row nine, we are going to turn our work and chain three, which does not count as a stitch, and triple crochet into the same first stitch and this is the same as any other triple crochet every other row round where we will just chain one, skip a stitch and triple crochet into the next stitch. And then chain one, skip a stitch and triple crochet into the next stitch. 
And I'm now going to go on to repeat this pattern until I have the length for my strap that I would like. Before I go on to explain too much more with the strap, I just wanted to show you what I have going on here. So you are going to want to go on now to work your strap to be the length that you need your strap to be. And if you do not know what length you need your strap to be, most straps or armhole sizes are eight to 12 inches, which means all the space in the armhole all the way around is usually 8 to 12 inches. So that does incorporate the strap and this armhole space here across the top of the dress. At this point you are also going to want to know how much space in between the two straps you are going to want on the front and back of your dress. This space is typically five to seven inches, depending on the size of the dress, the size of the person that it is for, and the preference of how you would like your straps to sit. My straps are a little wide, so this does take away from the space in between the straps just a little bit, but again, that is the look that I am going for for this dress. In between my straps on the front and back of my dress, I have mapped out already, as you can see, and I have 20 stitches in between each strap on the front and back, which is about four and a half inches. That leaves me 24 stitches underneath each arm to leave for my armhole, which is about five and a half inches. If you do not know how long you want your strap to be, you can use another shirt that you have that has straps and measure the length of the strap when it is laying flat like this. And you can do it the exact same way on this dress. And another way to do this is measure from the top of your shoulder at the very tippy top of your shoulder down to where you would like the top of your dress to sit in the beginning of your straps to start. So again, take that measurement and then multiply it by two to figure out how long you would like your strap to be. For this dress in particular, I would like the strap to be about six inches from the top of the shoulder to where I would like the straps to start. So again, I would like that to be six inches. So I am going up to on to work my strap to be six inches long. Reason being is because I would like these arches to be the right way up on both sides of my dress, the front and the back. Therefore, I am going to work the strap six inches long on the back and finish it off and then work it the exact same way on the front, work it the same amount of rows and finish it off. And then I will sew the top of the two halves together. And that is what I'm going to do on the front and back and for both straps. If you are not working the pattern for your strap and you are doing just a solid double crochet and double crochet every other stitch or triple crochet every other stitch row repeating pattern, you can just go on to work those rows all the way across and make your strap just one strap all the way until the front. And then you can sew the end onto the front if that is what you would like to do. And that goes for if you are doing any other pattern for the strap or if you don't mind if the arches are upside down on the front or back, you can continue just working your strap to be one strap all the way until the front. If you do work your strap to be one strap all the way from the back to the front and you change the width of your strap like I did here, you will want to make sure that you do that on the front of the strap as well if that is the look that you are going for. 
So you will want to measure the amount of space it took you to decrease to the amount of stitches you decreased to, which for me is three inches. And therefore you will want to leave three inches at the end of the strap for you to then increase back to the amount of stitches that you would like it to be. And again, whichever way you decide to work your strap, you will want to remember how you did that and then work it for the second strap the exact same way. And in this case, I'm going to do four little straps on the back and front on both straps and then sew them together, which I will show you here in just one moment. Again, since I would like my arches to all be going the same way, I am now going to go on to connect my yarn onto the first stitch here with a slip knot. And I'm going to work it the exact same way as I did that first half on the back of the dress. So again, start with your hook. And we are going to insert our hook into the first stitch that you would like your strap to be in. And this is also how you will start your second strap if, even if it's on the back of the dress here where you would like your second strap to be. So say you worked your first strap just one piece all the way across like I mentioned. You will start your second strap this exact same way. So again once we have slip stitched onto the stitch we are going to start in. We are then going to start working our strap the exact same way we did the first one. So I'm going to go on to work this the same way that I worked the first one, following the pattern for the dress in a small way. And you will want to go on to work your second strap or the second half of your first strap or however you are working this the same way that you worked your first strap. Okay, so I have now gone on to work these 10 rows in every spot that I had marked out for my straps, like I said, on both the front and back on both sides. And again, it's just the exact same 10 rows in all four spots. Now I am going to go on to sew the top of these straps together to make them one strap. And if yours is one strap piece already coming to the front, then you are going to want to sew the end of your strap on to the top of your dress. To do this, you are going to want to turn your work inside out so that you are sewing the right sides together. Or you can just manipulate it so that you again are sewing the right sides together which are the outside of your work. So this being the outside and this being the outside, I'm just going to flip them both. Again, so they are both twisted and the outside is now facing each other. And I'm just going to whip stitch these stitches together all the way across. So I left one of my ends long enough to use to do this. So I have my needle strung on there. We're going to start in the first stitch on both sides. And this is exactly what you will want to do. Again, if you are attaching your strap to the top of your dress, you will just want to line your strap up with where you want the front of your strap to be on your dress. And again, match the front sides up and start whip stitching your strap onto the first stitch of your dress that you would like it to be in. So again, from the front to the back, we are going to sew this together. And I'm going to sew these two stitches together again to make sure they are well done, making sure that your string goes over the top of it like so. And then we are going to go to the next two stitches from the front to the back and again pull that through making sure the string gets on the top and you are going to want to do that 
for each stitch, whether that be in the middle of your strap like mine is, or at the bottom of your strap, connecting it to the dress. I am now in the last stitch on both sides, so I'm going to go through those two stitches again one more time, just to make sure that they are well done. And then I'm going to finish this off and do this exact same thing for the second strap, which you will want to do for your second strap. Again, whether that's in the middle or on the top of the dress. When you have your straps all connected, wherever you needed to connect them at. The last thing that we are going to do for this dress is work a border around the armholes and around the middle of our dress here. So to do this, I am going to start here in one of the armholes. You will want to be on the outside of your work and you will want to have a slip knot on your hook and you're going to want to start towards the back of your work so again, where our seam is all the way down is where I'm using the back. And you're going to want to slip stitch onto a stitch on the top of the dress, again on the back side. So slip stitch onto a stitch. And then we are going to chain one and single crochet into the same first stitch. And then single crochet into each stitch until you come to your strap. When you come to your strap, we are going to single crochet into the side of each stitch all the way across your strap. So again, single crochet into the side of each stitch until you come to the front of the dress where the strap connects to the front and you will continue working one single crochet across the top of the dress underneath the arm until you come back to the beginning single crochet of this border round and you will slip stitch into the top of this beginning single crochet. You will then finish off this border round for underneath this arm and you are going to want to go on again to do the exact same thing for your second armhole and for the space in between your straps going up the middle of your straps to the front across the middle front of your dress across the second strap again to the back of the dress and then back across the back of the dress until you get back to wherever you started your border at and again you will finish that off just like we did underneath both arms. So again, when you've made it all the way around the armhole with one single crochet in the side of each stitch, all the way across the strap until you get to the front where you will work one single crochet across the top of the dress. Again, until you get back to the beginning single crochet of this border round and then we will slip stitch into the top of that beginning single crochet. That is the end of that border round. And then we will finish that off and weave in the ends. And you will go on to do the same thing for the last two border rounds around the middle of the straps and the other armhole. And that's all there is to it. So I hope that that was helpful and enjoyable for you. If it was, please hit that sub, like, and bell button and leave me a comment to tell me what you think. I hope that you guys go on to create many more amazing things. And until next time, guys, I'll see ya.